Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. It is the time of the week where we just chat. So if you're new here and you're looking for a tutorial on how to paint something or how to craft something or anything like that, you are in the wrong video. This is our weekly chit chat uh, in the community here. We all gather in the comments afterwards and just um, catch up with each other. It's fun. You are welcome to stay, but if you're looking for a tutorial, this is not it. You'll just be upset. You'll be upset. You'll be like, I've wasted a half an hour that I'll never get back, Lindsay. It's a madhouse. Why would you do that to me? In this wrong video, there's plenty of tutorials. Like, like this one. I just posted the other day. The, uh, the time lapse is here on YouTube, but the real time one is in Critique Club, if you're interested in that. Uh, it was our second March one. I was a little, well, I don't have set dates where I, where I post the two tutorials every month for Critique Club, but I try to kind of like usually do the second and third week, but um, I was really uh, I kind of busy this month working on my new course, Watercolor Crayon Workshop, which is now live. It has just launched. So if you want to check out that class, this is one of the paintings from it, and these are all done with watercolor crayons water soluble crayons. I'll turn that down a little bit. Um, so a lot of fun. You're going to paint eight things together and I have a special, as always, whenever I launch a class, I like to offer it to my subscribers at a 50% discount because I don't like it when I'm excited for something and I buy it and then it goes on sale like a month later and all the people that were there that were supporting that bought it first get kind of like get the worst deal. I want my people to get the best deal. So I always launch it at the lowest price possible. That's 50% off. Um, so if you'd like to grab it, uh, there'll be a coupon code in the video description. It's crayon50, but I will have a link in the description where you can click on it. We'll have the discount already in it. But I'll have all those details in the video description. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really love watercolor crayons, and I've been so into them lately, and I thought it was time, high time, to have a course on it. So if you have a set of them, you can get the most out of them too. So check that out in the video description. And uh, it's been a busy week. It's been a busy week. I'm actually filming this at 3.11 in the afternoon on Thursday because tomorrow I will be at um, college accepted students day for my well both both the girls actually have accepted students day at the um, at one of the colleges that they've been accepted to at, or actually two two different colleges so Jason's gonna take uh, Lila to one I'm gonna take Mesa to the other one and, uh, and it'll be fun it'll be neat to see the campus and hopefully um, they'll get a good feel for it and, and decide they want to go there because those are the in-state schools and I really would like my kids to go to the in-state schools so they won't be so far away <laughs> and also it's way cheaper but um but they're good schools anyway and I hope that uh, I hope they have a good time and I will be there and uh yeah so that's what I'll be doing tomorrow and then and then Maisie is in the talent show at school it's a fundraiser for project graduation which if you don't know what project graduation is it's a thing we do um I think it's probably well I don't know maybe it's all over the world maybe it's just in Maine, I, I don't know. I think I think probably a lot of schools do it, but basically what it is, it's a big party after graduation that the school puts on. They usually rent out like a uh, fitness center or a YMCA or something like that. And they, um, like when I was in high school, they rented out a gym, like a fitness center called Champions. Um, so what they do is they rent out a fitness center and then um, they'll have like different games and prizes and tons of food. And basically it's to keep the kids off the road after graduation, to keep them someplace safe so, you know, they're not out partying and, you know, get into a car with somebody drinking or anything like that. It's to keep the kids safe after graduation because I guess there used to be a lot of deaths after graduation, like car accidents and stuff. So, um, project graduation. Um, so they're doing a fundraiser for that. And Lila, uh, no, Lila's not in it. Maisie is in it. And <laughs> Maisie asked me to make a sock puppet. So I'm going to show you. So this is what I've done done today. Don't don't be jealous of my glamorous lifestyle. She had, she actually texted me yesterday. She's like, Mom, would it be too late for you to make me a sock, a sock puppet? And uh, it's actually not for her to use. It's for um, it's for the MC. And they said, and I said, okay, what do you want the sock puppet to look like? And she's like, well, brown hair, button eyes, and a, a tongue kind of sticking out sideways. And I hopefully, I don't want the tongue too far sideways, but I think it's just going to be used in, in one bit. But <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? New career? I don't know. Want a tutorial? That's not gonna happen. It actually took me like five, I don't know, ten minutes. Uh, that's why I had the glue, oh, that's why I had the glue gun out because, um, because I had to, I, I wasn't stitching. I was not gonna stitch the hair and the buttons onto a sock puppet or something. It's gonna be used for like ten minutes. This does not need to stand the test of time. No light fast worries here, friends. <laughs> it's a madhouse. I was thinking about other, uh, <laughs> last week in the comments we were talking about Chal Charlton Heston movies and roles and stuff and, and then, uh, and then Soylent Green came to mind. 
People! It's made from people! Who remembers that movie? And Omega Man, man, he's been in the greatest... <laughs> he's been in some of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made. <laughs> Forget Agony and the Ecstasy. He was in Soylent Green and Omega Man. Oh boy, I don't know. Actually, I don't know too many movies that he was in. Those are like the only ones that popped to mind. I think he was... Wasn't he like in uh, some religious movie? Probably The Agony and the Ecstasy, but I think there was another one too. I don't know. I don't know my religious movies. Something they play on Easter. Maybe that was the agony and the ecstasy. I don't know. But anyways, I've got to, uh, I've got to clean this place up. <laughs> this room is such a mess. A bad house. Uh, yeah, it's like, I've got stuff stacked everywhere. Oh my gosh. So here's my foolish, foolish buy of the week. Uh, so as I might have mentioned before, I ran out of clear gesso and I've been like obsessed with Liquitex clear gesso and priming um, and priming all of my surfaces with it to use with colored pencils and pastels it, and watercolor crayons. It just is like magic. It makes the surface so much better and it makes it act like pastel mat and sanded papers that are so expensive. And like sanded papers, there's been some controversy whether they're really acid free uh, and archival. So, and, and gesso absolutely is so and it works so good and um so this is what i had and i actually washed it out because i thought i would get a big container of the liquitex clear gesso and just decant it into here because this is probably it's about two inches wide so it's perfect for putting my brush in that i like to like coat surfaces with it's like i have like an inch and a half golden tackle on that's perfect for prepping um i use on uh, matte board scraps because i i actually used to do professional custom framing out of my home um before uh, before the YouTube thing took off. It was just kind of one of my side hustles. And so I would have all these matte board scraps. I also did my own professional matting. And um, and yeah, I mean, it wasn't something I loved doing, but it was something that um, I enjoyed doing, I was good at, and it paid well. Uh, but anyway, I have all these scraps for like the inside of windows and stuff. And I've been prepping those with a clear gesso and using them for colored pencil and pastel and watercolor crayon, and it's fabulous. And I ran out, um, I actually bulk prepped a bunch and I ran out, and so I'm like, this is just like a little kind of sample size. It was in like a kit of mediums that I bought. And so I'm like, I want to get some Liquitex gesso, but I, um, I'd i been waiting because I didn't want to have anything shipped in the winter. And it was finally getting warm enough. And so I was looking on Amazon because I didn't have enough to do like an order from like Blick or Jerry's without paying like 10 bucks for shipping. And it's like, well, if I'm paying an extra $10 for a little bottle of gesso, that's totally wiping out the um, any any savings and I didn't want to just order extra stuff to make the shipping minimum I didn't need anything else and then and I checked for the like kind of like you know you can go to Michael's online and it'll tell you if their stuff's in store locally and the, and the Liquitex gesso was out of stock uh, locally so I'm like well and I didn't have any reason to just go all the way to the other side of Bangor for um, just to see if they had any on the shelves so I'm just like, well, I'll just uh, order something on Amazon. They didn't have, they only had the really big bottles and they were really overpriced because obviously the fact that they're shipping in. Um, so I, uh, I saw Montmart and it was called Clear Texture Gesso. And, and so I read the description and it said ideal, ideal for using under charcoal, pastels and pencils. And uh, or it makes an ideal ground for under that. I'm like, well, that sounds like what I'm getting with the Liquitex. This is a couple bucks cheaper. Um, plus they were out of the eight ounce, so I'd have to go up to the 16 ounce, which was really overpriced on Amazon, but I wouldn't have to pay shipping, but still it was, you know, it was less than what I would pay like at Blick if I had to pay shipping on top, but still it was more than I wanted to pay. So this was like $7.99 or $8.99. And I'm like, well, I'll take a chance. And all the reviews are really good. And, um, and I think for certain things, it's fine. Like a lot of people were using them on paint by numbers. Like they would, um, uh, they would get the paint by numbers, which are sometimes on like a cardboard and they would coat it with the, the, the clear texture gesso so they could see their numbers and then paint over it. And I'm sure that's perfect for that, but it did not work for pencils. It was just too slick. It, like it sealed the paper too much. I think it'd be really good for like, if you were doing, um, like maybe a wood slice and you want to keep that wood background, like you could put a coating of that on it, you'd still be able to see the wood grain. Then you could paint your picture with like acrylics or whatever. And it would like make the paint glide a little bit better. I, you could collage with it if you want to paint on top because you don't need a ton of texture, but it would be a good surface for that. But for pencil, it just is not enough grit. And so I'm like, oh, I was so, I was so ticked off. I'm like, Lindsay, every time you try to save a buck, 
That's what happens. Why, you know, you have a product that you love, you know is gonna work, you know is good. Why look to save a couple bucks? Um, so it's like I knew better and I did it anyway. Uh, so that is my advice to you. If there's a product that you that works really well for you and you know it works really well for you, don't try to save a couple bucks by going with something else because I'm still gonna have to rebuy the Liquitex and now I've got that. So I'm like, well, I didn't want it to go to waste. So I decided to, um, I probably could have returned it, but I don't know, I'd taken the little seal off of it, so I don't know. Um, so I, I didn't want it to go to waste, so I found some really fine sand that I think I picked up, it was like a texture additive, I think I bought it, it was to add to paint, it was a texture additive for paint, and I don't remember the brand because I poured it into a little jar, um, I think I got it at a hardware store, and it was for adding to paint so that like you could paint it on your porch and your your steps wouldn't be slippery, or you could paint it into, add it to your paint if you're painting your stairs so they wouldn't be slippery, I think, and it was very, very fine, it was almost like, um, <sighs> It was just really fine. I can't like marble dust almost. It was super fine. So I thought, um, I thought that might work, but it was too gritty. It was like, it wasn't even enough. It wasn't even like sanded paper was. It was, and, and it was kind of wanting to brush off. Like that wasn't holding it as well. So I'm like, Ugh. so I just wasted a bunch of that trying to mix that up and make it work. So then, um, I was kind of like, ah, so I can't, I mean, I made so many swatches and done so many samples, so many like, you know, tests on it. So then finally I thought, well, what about baking soda? Because I, I looked for 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 DIY clear gesso recipes and so many of them called for like um, cornstarch. And I'm like, I am not using an organic product in my art supplies because it's gonna mold. I mean, the, it's like those DIYs for like DIY Mod Podge and they're like flour and water. I'm like, that is not Mod Podge. That is a moldy science experiment waiting to happen. I'm not growing penicillin, I'm trying to prep something, I'm trying to decapod, I'm not trying to like, you know, <laughs> grow mushrooms or mold spores anywhere. I want, you know, I want what I want, but I'm too cheap to buy it apparently, until I don't get what I want and I have to buy it anyway. Um, please, learn from my mistakes. But anyway, so I thought, well, baking soda is just sodium car um, carbonate. And I asked a friend who's a chemist, um, the spin doctor on YouTube, Rich, and I said, is that gonna, would that hurt? Well, first I asked, could I, and this is before I bought that, I said, could I take baking soda and mix it with Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge, and make a ground? And he's like, well, that's, that's close to, he says it's PVA, it's not uh, acrylic, so there could be some off-gassing, and you could have bubbles in the future, have some problems with the surface in the future. So he goes, you'd be better off using like a matte medium. I'm like, okay, I have matte medium, but still, for whatever reason, I'm like, I'm taking a chance on that gesso. And so when I got that, I wasn't doing what I want, and the sand didn't work, I'm like, I'm gonna try baking soda. Baking soda is basic, not acidic, so I know it's not gonna make my surface acidic. So I took some baking soda, and just a little bit of that this time, and mixed it up, see how it would work, and it worked really well. So then I, I add some to the bottle, which I had used up to like that much with my other experiment, because I poured it into a whole other container, and I shook it like the Dickens. I shook the devil out of it, as Bob Ross would say. And, uh, and it worked great. So I have that left. I'm not going to do it again. I don't remember how much I put in there. It was definitely put a little in, test it, put a little in, test it until it got to the, the, the texture that I wanted. And, uh, and I'm going to use that up and then I'm, I am not going to stray. I've learned my lesson, Liquitex Clear Gesso. I'm not going to stray from you again. No more flings with the likes of these. No, no. We are going to stick with Liquitex Clear Gesso from now on. Oh man, alive. <sighs> to save a few bucks. To a stitch in, what is, I was gonna say a stitch in time saves nine, but that's not the right, that's a uh, false economy, false economy, that is false economy. Actually, I think it's fine for other server, I, I don't wanna like, I'm not roasting this product, this product is fine for like, like if I wanted to collage, and I wanted to do a background on a canvas and I wanted to collage, that would be great for as a collage medium, and then I could use like acrylics over it, it would have plenty of grab for that just not enough for what I wanted it for. But I but I did review it and I did say that, not for colored pencils, because where they went out of their way to say ideal for colored pencils, I had to put my two cents in. And granted, maybe someone who never used Liquitex gesso would be like, that's fine. Um, but when I was comparing using this gesso as it came on the mat board and paper, and then using a paper plane, like swatching side by side on the plain paper, then on the gesso paper, there was no benefit to doing it. So it's like, I'm not gonna waste my time and buy that product and waste the product if it does not give me benefit. And I didn't feel like that gave me any benefit under color pencil. So if you are uh, if you are wanting to clear gesso some stuff so that you can do colored pencils or pastels over it, just, you know, get the Liquitex. I know it's a couple bucks more, but it is worth it. You're not, cause you're gonna have to buy it anyway, or you're just gonna be disappointed. You'd be like, what's Lindsay talking about? This doesn't work. 
you gotta have the look for text. I don't know why, but they, they've got some special magic. That's all I can say. Unless you guys know of like a, another brand that's as good as Liquitex, but I'm sure it's going to be as expensive as Liquitex because, you know, it's expensive for a reason, I guess. Um, and it's not even that expensive. It was like a couple, like literally a couple dollars more. Uh, and if you were buying a larger container, it would have been the same price per ounce. So whatever. <sighs> lesson learned, my friends. So what else? So uh, we got the new class. We got the new critique club lesson. We got some wacky gesso <laughs> experiment. <laughs> Uh, I've been working, I've been gathering supplies for the gouache travel palette um, uh, video and those two palettes I mentioned arrived so I'm really excited to try them. I'll show you actually. This isn't even on my list of things to talk about. I wasn't to talk about it but I thought I'd show you because this is that Jerry Q one. Um, this is what I really think this one's going to work, but then the, I think the other one's going to work too. So let me just, so I took the, this, that was just the packaging. So check this out. So what happens is you slide, you get a uh, mixing palette you can slide out. You've got the top, which it could be another mixing palette to slide out. And then you've got a, uh, like this uh, cover here. It's going to flip up. If I do it the right way. So you got a mixing space there. I might put like a, um, like out some foam here just for like um, to like keep it from like leaking and then we've got this which can hold half pans at least it should you know what let me grab a half pan let's see if it will fit I just got an empty yep I just popped an empty half pan in there that will fit that's probably what I'll do is I'll put my gouache in the little half pans um, and then as it's drying push it down like John Muir Laws said you could do and I think that will work pretty well, but I thought that was just, I like, I like how it's, it's small, but I've got lots of mixing space. And, um, and even if the, the gouache is wet, I think, you know, if I think if I let it kind of dry to like semi-moist, kind of like top it off and push it down and use a water brush, I think this is going to work. I really do. This was $10. Um, like I said, I bought a couple because I'm going to do a comparison and that way you can kind of see different options if you're interested in trying gouache plein air painting. And that way you don't have to buy three palettes to figure out what you like. You can say, I'll let Lindsay buy the foolish crap and see how it works before I spend my money. That's what I'm here for, friends. Taking one for the team. Oh my word, I need my head examined. So this one here, um, actually, I really like the looks of this. And it came with a set of brushes, which I'll probably give away because um, I really don't need any more brushes like this. But I came with them. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was kind of neat. First, I thought they were they were tiny. They were packaged like this. And it had like a wrapping around it. And I thought, oh, those are mini travel brushes. Now, that's exciting, but not. They're just regular. They're just kind of on the small side. Uh, so this one is, I actually learned about this palette on Becca Hilburn's channel. Her channel is called Natto Soup. And she does a... Um, a lot of different reviews, mostly watercolor and marker reviews. And, um, oh gosh. Um, and I thought, boy, that looks just like something, that looks just like something I would really use. Um, but she got it from AliExpress and I was waiting for it to come to Amazon because I don't, uh, I haven't ordered on AliExpress, but check this out. So this comes, this, the palette is inside the little water cup and I'm just, pardon me for like not being really quick and slick with it because I just literally got it in the mail today. So this little water cup, which I thought if I'm like hiking with a dog and, um, and I don't use this for paint water because I want to try to wash with a water brush, I could pour from my water bottle in here and let it be my dog's water dish. So I thought that would actually be really nice. Although I don't know about painting with my dog in tow because she needs to be leashed. She's not under voice command. So unless I can train her under voice command, which I don't know. It doesn't seem likely at this point in our lives, but uh, yeah, so she'll have to be on a leash, but I thought that was kind of neat. Um, or even if I just want to bring like a little water bottle for her when we're, when we're hiking in the summer, usually we don't go, go too far because she doesn't like to ride, so we're just walking the trails by her house. But anyway, um, then you've got this thing here, which is, I, I kind of, I'm kind of afraid to, it's still pretty tight to open. I'm, I'm always a little afraid that I'm gonna like snap it. But no, well, it's it's all right. It just it almost feels like I'm gonna snap it. But mixing space there, a silicone gasket here, and then 16 wells. So I think you can drop a hell. Try it again. 16. I don't think I'll put half pans in here because that it's really deep, and I think that would just be a pain. But they do fit. If you want to like test it out before you commit it to what colors you're gonna put in there. Oh, I just noticed I've got eye eyebrow stuff on my. Uh, I have the puniest eyebrow, so I actually do like use a little, it's like this thing and it has like a little paintbrush on the end. It's like, it's like a, 
it reminds me of like a like a really skinny Tombow marker. <laughs> so I marker them and they're so puny. Oh my word. They are so puny. Um, but then yeah, this slides back on. There's like little uh, channels in there so it can fit around the divisions and it's sealed all the way to the top. So this, I have a lot of uh, a lot of hope for this and I didn't realize it clicked into that so well. That's exciting. I'll get a hang of it at some point here because right, right now I don't really have the... I don't really have a hang of it yet, but there we go. Yeah, and then there's like a like a guitar strap here that um, actually I bet you could use this as a camera strap or a guitar strap if you wanted to. I actually need a camera strap, so I don't know if I'll use that with the uh, with the palette or not. But uh, that's kind of that's kind of clever. It was like um, I think like fourteen dollars for all of that, fourteen fifty I believe. Anyway, um, I'll be trying that out, plus some stuff I already have and see what I could come up with for a really nice, like, plain air gouache um, setup. Uh, because I'm kind of excited. I think what I'm going to do is actually, um, I'm going to do a combination. I'm going to do my darker colors and watercolor and then the lighter colors and gouache so I can get those really dark values. I don't know if I saw that with, if that was a John Muir Law tip or a James Gurney tip. It was one or the other. I really enjoy... Um, both of their channels for uh, like field work, that sort of thing, like plein air sketching. So speaking about being outside, I am totally itching for spring and summer. And well, I guess it te technically by the calendar it's spring. So I started a counter compost. I had, got, this was like pretzels came in this thing and I'm like, this is a really nice container. So I washed it. I didn't know what I was gonna use it for. I thought I might store lace in it or something, but I have a couple bird cages with my lace in it. So. <laughs> Like everyone stores their lace and bird cages, right? Um, but I was like, oh, I could use this for my lace and then I won't have dust on it. But my lace is dusty. I'll just shake it off before I use it on something. <laughs> I'm not fancy. Uh, clearly, I'm not fancy. So I thought, while well, I've been making, so my friend, the French, let's, let's rewind a couple weeks. The French press coffee experiment is going swimmingly. It's delightful. Um, and then you gotta dump your grinds out, which you know, I'm not using more coffee than I did before, but for some reason, it just, because I'm washing out that French press every single day, instead of just like whacking the, my reusable coffee filter on the inside of the trash can to get the, the uh, grinds out, you can't do that with glass, you know, break it. So I'm like really having to deal with these grinds. And I'm like, man, this is so wasteful. What can I do with the coffee grinds? Can I, can I compost them? And so I started a compost, a counter compost collection system uh, with this pretzel container because it's got a nice, ooh, it's like, it's like, ooh, it's like slushy in there. Um, it's got a nice fitting lid. <laughs> Thank goodness because I'd be wearing coffee juice and uh, apple cores and eggshells and um, like, oh yeah, what is that? Lemon peels and carrot shavings and stuff like that. So um, this will, I'm going to dump this out to the compost tumbler today and I'm also going to see if the compostable <laughs> coffee cup I stuck out there last year has uh, has disintegrated because I haven't put anything into that compost tumbler since like probably October so I'm sure it's it's nice and ripe out there. Um, I We've had a compost tumbler for a few years. I really like it. I recommend it if you don't want to have a compost heap because it's way less work. You just give it a spin. It's like we're playing the wheel of compost. It's like wheel of fortune. Spin it Vanna! Wait, no. Who, who did the? Yeah, it wasn't Vanna White, wasn't it, that spun the wheel? She also did the letters, wasn't it? Her? Who spun the wheel? No, the people spun the wheel. They spun their own wheel. It was Vanna who turned the letters. Shoot. I was gonna pretend to be Vanna White and spin the compost tumbler. Well, I still can. Why not? Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna see how that how that's going. I really want to garden, and I heard of this, um, that you can grow corn and beans or peas and squash together and like the corn will shoot up first and then the beans will like will go up the corn stalk and then the squash will grow out on the ground and so like you use this small amount of space really efficiently and they all grow symbiotically together so I think that would be cool um that's probably not the most efficient way to grow I mean you can buy corn really cheap so I don't know but I think that would be kind of cool to do that um, I don't really have much of a green thumb so I don't have anything to lose I'm not like expecting to have a big bountiful harvest my family's not gonna be counting on me to uh, <laughs> to grow food for them but I thought that would be kind of an interesting um, an interesting thing to try I love fresh tomatoes so I definitely want to grow some tomatoes and um, yeah I, I hope I hope I actually follow through with it <laughs> 
it's never happened before, but who, who knows, maybe. Anytime we ever have any plans growing, it's all my husband, because he actually does seem to have a bit of a green thumb. Um, what else? What else? What else? I have a list on my phone. I'm actually glad my phone hasn't run yet because next week my uh, daughter Maisie is having her wisdom teeth out and uh, they said they were going to call a week ahead of time. I don't know if it's a week to the day or what, but it would be like a week to the day today and kind of go over the protocol of like, you know, don't eat after midnight, basically treat your child like she's a gremlin, don't feed her after midnight. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, so they don't throw up when they have anesthesia. Oh, guys, uh, remember the sunflower painting and the uh, the fundraiser that a little creative was doing uh, two weeks ago for Ukraine? Uh, we raised, thanks to you guys, uh, anyone who bought paint, uh, she was donating 100% of the profits to the relief effort, and we raised $5,463.69. So she has wired that money over to um, the uh, the outfit that's taking care of the Ukrainian refugees in Poland to feed and house them. So well done. Well done, guys. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, to let you know that. I had that on my list. What else? Um, oh, I wanted to update you on some other great idea I had that really didn't pan out to be such a great idea, and that was using this rack for my uh, my Derwent pencils. I was hoping that by having my Derwent Light Fast and Pro Color and drawing pencils in this rack, I would use them more. And well, that worked. I did use them more, but. I had difficulty identifying my colors. I had them um, with the lead side up because I always go by the lead to pick the color. But um, what I didn't realize, and that if you look at that rack behind me there, all of those pencils have the colorful barrels. And I'll often just grab one of those to like touch up something or, you know, to color something quickly because I can identify them really quickly because I'll go by the color on the barrel first, then I'll look at the tips for more specific identification. Not having a colored barrel made it take me way too long to find my colors in that rack because I couldn't see the flash of color they have on the end. So there, the Derwent pencils are back in their trays and I'm just gonna lay the trays out when I wanna use them. But um, I think it was a good experiment because it did have them out in front of me and had me using them a lot more. So um, just getting that habit of using them, I'm just gonna have to lay the trays out because with the uh, wooden, um, or solid color barrels, it just took me too long to identify what color I was reaching for. So I'm gonna have to use that that container for something else. I just, I need to clean up in here. I was just throwing stuff in there to see uh, what it what it fit well, but, um, but yeah, I, I think I need to go through and, cause things just kind of collect in here because I work in here all the time, uh, especially when it's cold weather because I can heat this space really well. And so like things like brushes just get like left where I don't need this many, they start to like pile up and I need to go through everything and put everything back away in the room of Horde and then just keep my essentials in here or whatever I'm excited about using at the moment. But uh, but there's that, I really, I'm gonna start, I'm, as soon as we, we're done chatting, I'm gonna start picking up in here because it is such a mess. But I wanna thank you so much for spending part of your Saturday with me. I hope you enjoyed the chat and don't forget about the 50% off on my watercolor crayon workshop. Links in the video description and I'd love to see you in class. It's a fun one, it's so much fun and I hope you enjoy it. So uh, with that, I will say adieu and until next time, happy crafting, bye.